Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about undocumented combat changes on the PTR. Thanks to Nidkin on Reddit for posting all of these changes in a nice list. We're going to go through each one and talk about what is really being nerfed here, and what's the big changes that are coming from the PTR to live October 18th with Brimstone Sands. So the first thing we see here is the Rapier. So various playtesters have discovered that some of the combat changes made on the PTR have not been addressed in the PTR patch notes. This is something we've seen the devs do before for some reason. They just don't seem to get all of the notes down on the PTR patch notes. But here, this is a list of the changes that have been identified. So remember that these PTR changes are tentative and may be adjusted or removed before the release of Brimstone Sands. So Rapier is first up, Insult to Injury. The Repost perk is getting a major rework here. So if Repost is triggered successfully, all of your attacks become uninterruptible for three seconds. That's the current kind of way it works. So if you're able to get a Repost off, it doesn't matter if you're able to even hit them with a Repost, you're going to get uninterruptible attacks for three seconds, which is huge. It's going to basically give you grit on everything. Uh, we also have the Repost now being it has to successfully hit a target, which is a very, very big difference in what Repost is needed to do to give you some kind of bonus or increase in some of these different perks. So insult to injury, you can see here gain in power, increasing damage by 10% for three seconds. That's not near as good as it once was. We'll see if this does make it to live. I think Rapier is going to continue to need some of these nerfs, but I really do hope they don't nerf it to the ground. Next, we have Tondo and Flourish inflict thrust damage. Now over to slash damage. So Rapier, the Tondo and Flourish used to inflict that thrust damage. Now we're going over to see it inflict that slash damage, which is a definite change, but nothing too crazy there. As we go into the next one, this is where we see a lot of changes. It's actually my PvP mage build that I just made a video about recently. It's going to have a lot of different things that have changed, whether you're running the Empowering Meteor Shower, the Efficient Burnout, or Refreshing Pillar of Fire. A lot of changes as well with the Ice Gauntlet and many more weapons. So let's take a look here at the Fire Staff. The Refreshing Pillar of Fire, the skill perk, is reduced this cooldown's ability by 25%, now over to 30%. So that's a buff. But then it's per enemy hit with the three hits max now down to two hits max. So overall, you're seeing a nerf here. But if you're playing very, very small scale or using pillar and even a 1v1, this is actually going to be a buff for you. However, if you're playing anything like OPR or larger scale, this is definitely going to be a nerf. And I would even struggle to say that this is probably even a nerf in arena because usually I'm using pillar of fire if I'm hitting two or more enemies. So probably a nerf all around with the refreshing pillar of fire, but not too big of a deal. I think we won't see too many people complain about this one in small scale. But definitely, like I said, in wars, the viability definitely goes down with the skill perk. Next, we have Efficient Burnout. With the skill perk, until your next hit, deal 33% increased fire damage, and your mana regen is increased by 20% for 8 seconds. So now it is, after using Burnout, gain 132% mana regen for 8 seconds, which is much, much more. Additionally, your next attack deals 33% increased fire damage. So you're seeing pretty much the same thing here with Efficient Burnout. You're just going to get a lot more mana. I just don't see many people having mana issues and using this skill perk for really specifically mana. So uh, it's kind of interesting to me to see this come out and be like a major change for some people, but it is it is what it is. So let's go over to the Empowering Meteor Shower. This is another skill perk, so no longer persisting on weapon swap, even when slotted on armor. This is huge and kind of a huge nerf to the current meta of Empowering Meteor Shower being what you run in many different scenarios. I do think this will change the meta quite a bit when it comes to Meteor Shower, which is kind of a bummer because Meteor Shower has no place in anywhere yet again with this change so hopefully they do a full rework with meteor shower a lot of people talking about one just big blast coming down on their opponents it just takes a while to cast or maybe the longer you cast the more damage it does but empowering meteor shower that's a big change for sure i want to go take a look though at the ice gauntlet now so we can ingust the ice storm perk Incoming damage increased by 10% for 3 seconds to targets in an ice storm while they are below 50% health. Well, now the ice storm damage is increased by 10% to enemies below 50% health. So the difference here is incoming damage is not going to be increased. However, the damage to enemies below 50% health is going to be increased. So it's an interesting little change there. Um, it probably won't affect too much. Just expect your ice spikes to do a little bit less damage if you are you know, getting them in those ice storms, you're going to lose that 10% buff that you were getting before when they were below 50% health. So just kind of note that one, not a huge, huge change, but definitely something you should know, uh, definitely something you should know if you're an ice gauntlet user. 
Next up, we have the Ultimate Chill ability. So this is an Ice Gauntlet Capstone perk. 25% increased ice damage to targets now apply or only applies to the damage from the primary Ice Gauntlet user. Allied damage from Ice Gems elemental perks no longer benefit from this perk. So you won't be able to see people abusing this by going, you know, three Ice Gauntlets in Arena and just capitalizing on this and what it used to be. So I do think this is probably overall a decent change. Pylon Burst is next up. It's a skill perk. Ice Pylon deals 10% increased damage. It also deals a burst of damage to foes within 3 meters whenever it fires. So it's not whenever it fires anymore. It's every 2 seconds, which is pretty much the same thing, but it's definitely a little bit slower than the previous. So it's a small nerf to the Pylon Burst skill perk. So next up, we have Sword and Shield. Fortifying Shield Rush. The skill perk no longer persists on weapon swap, even when slotted on armor. And that's something you're going to see a lot down the line. So musket, here you'll see it, here you'll see it, uh, here you'll see it. So they're changing that fully. So expect pretty much every skill does not really work when you weapon swap. Basically, you're not going to get those perks. I, I want to talk a little bit more about it so you understand what I'm saying. But this is just a small change, um, but it really does hurt sword and shield in a little way because if you're using that fortified shield rush, you're just not going to have that when you switch weapons anymore. That persistent perk continue on. So next up we have the hatchet. The aerial transmission infected throw perk weaken and disease debuffs persist correctly on affected targets when disease cloud disappears. So this is definitely a good thing to see as well. We have the musket. So accelerating traps skill perk no longer persists on weapon swap. And then same thing with the empowering shooter stance skill perk no longer persists on weapon swap. So you can see here, that's two different perks that are going to be, you know, kind of just gutted when it comes to the musket and weapon swapping. So that's huge for musket players to note that this is in effect probably on October 18th. Definitely test it though to make sure it went through. We have next up bow, empowering and explosive arrow, no longer persisting on weapon swap. It's going to be that skill perk again. They just don't want you to be able to utilize those skill perks for a different weapon. It's probably because maybe that gray sword's a little busted and you may be able to just use it too much or too well with the next weapon swap you do after the 18th and on. So that's something you definitely want to know is what weapon swap is going to do and kind of change in this next patch. So blunderbuss is another one. The venturing claw shot no longer persists on weapon swap even when slotted on armor. Spear, no longer persisting on weapon swap when it comes down to the fortifying perforate, which is a huge nerf to the spear in PvE and much, much more. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in pre or not previous videos, but more videos or new videos very, very soon, and talk a little bit about what that does for PvE style players in the spear. Next up, we have the Life Staff. So Mending Protection skill perk obviously no longer persists on weapon swap yet again, even when slotted on armor. Then we have the Keenly perk, so no longer persists when swapping between weapons. And then we have the Keen Speed, so on critical hit, gain 20% haste for 5 seconds instead of 10 seconds, and it's a 10 second cooldown. So that's crazy to see as well. And then the biggest one that a lot of people, light armor users, are going to need to know is Shirking Energy, dodging through an attack with light equip load, grants 15 stamina instead of that previous 29 stamina. It's still on that 6 second cooldown, but it's a huge nerf to Shirking Energy as Shirking Energy was really, really, really strong. Still going to be a very, very strong uh, you know, perk that you're going to be looking for on light builds, but just definitely nerfed a little bit there, basically having the stamina you'll get back in return for that dodge roll. So huge changes to the PTR coming to live, most likely, like I said, with the Brimstone Sands launch. Let me know down in the YouTube comment section below. And if you haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on if you want to stay up to date with all these big changes that are just sneakily and secretly trying to get through without us knowing. Thanks again for Nidkin, the Reddit user, for posting this nice list. I'll see you guys all in the next one.